What's up, everybody? This is Phil Rogacki. And I'm Jared Abergina. You're listening to Two Tree Guys Podcast. What's up, everybody? Phil Rogacki here, joined by my partner, Jared Abergina. What's up, dude? What's up, my man? Another episode of Gear Talk uh, we're bringing you today, guys. Uh, we're going to be talking on this one, the zigzag and the chicane, talking about the uses, the safety, uh, inspection, uh, all sorts of different things there. But before we get into Gear Talk, guys, uh, we got a bunch of different episodes we have on the show. We have our Gear Talk that you're listening to today. We have a What's Your Story, where we travel around to different trade shows and hear individuals' story. Uh, everybody has a unique story of how they got in the industry, people that have helped them out in the industry and, and uh, wisdom that they can share. And then we have our full length episode where we uh, get in the studio with somebody who's in town and we spend an hour to two hours drinking beer, having laughs and talking about things tree guys talk about here. And uh, next we're going to be bringing our, our safety talks or our safety flashes, or I don't even know what the title may be. So every week you guys will be able to have safety uh, talks about real life scenarios uh, how to have controls over those and uh, be able to discuss and hear opinions of how we could have changed that uh, scenario uh, and made it better or safer or, you know, uh, save someone's life. So those are the talks we're bringing you. And if you guys like these talks that you have, share them, put them out there in the universe, uh, share them on your page. Like I said, we don't get paid. That's the fee. If you listen to it today and you don't pay the fee, you're a jerk. Pay the fee. All right, so let's get into it. What's up, man? All Take right. it. Yeah, so we're uh, we're rolling here. We're, um, gosh, what are we, episode four? And we're going to dive right into a, a type of climbing system, which you guys have all heard of, is the you know infamous zigzag, um, which is going to follow the chicane. So um, I know there's some controversy around this. I know there's lots of pros, lots of cons, lots of people that hate it, love it, and everything in between. So... Uh, we'll hash some of that out, and uh, I think this will be kind of fun. This will be good. Good, good, yeah. good. And, and you know, again, with, with, with these gear talks that we talk about, uh, guys, we're not going to cover everything on this. There's a lot to cover, hours and hours of discussions and talks. We're just giving you very high-level talks on this today. Uh, but if you guys have any other things you guys want us to talk about or bring up, uh, ask your questions on the show today, and uh, we'll ask them uh, to Jared as we're going through this. Uh, also, just DM us on different products and things you want us to bring up on the show, and we'll make sure we get those on the show for yeah, this. But D DM Phil. DM no Rob. <laughs> yeah, don't DM. Don't don't DM Jared. I don't ever check my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you you only check it when you're BMing. Yeah. <laughs> That's bowel movement for everybody that, BMing, didn't, that everybody didn't work in a nursing home. <laughs> okay, good. Let's uh, let's kick this off. So uh, the zigzag, all right, the, the first mechanical prusik. Um, you know, I kind of have a soft spot for this device. You know, I was a, a an athlete for Petzl for quite a few years back in the day uh, when this first came out and was able to really see this thing through the entire process from, you know, the prototype to where it's at today. So I think it's it's changed the industry. I think it really opened up a lot of doors for mechanical devices uh, that we're using today uh, and, and uh, from SRS to MRS. But, uh, yeah, just kind of want to touch on where it began and where it is today for a lot of you that either don't like it, don't run it, uh, or just don't know much about it. So, Obviously, as you guys can see, uh, this is a mechanical pressing. So we, we just took, um, you know, say, uh, you know, our friction hitch and we turned it into uh, a chain link friction hitch. And it's a, it's a sp with a spring loaded uh, toggle on the top. And <clears throat> then we have our ball bearing pulley here. And we have a built in swivel. Some of them have a swivel. Some of them do not have a swivel. So if you guys hate swivels, which I know some of you do, you don't have to have it with a swivel. It's an option. It's an option. And then they uh, <clears throat> redesigned this this model here with the actual third attachment here. So if you want to run another system, 
uh, or say if a, you know a V rig into this, you have another attachment point. If you're going to run SRS with say a chicane on top of it, uh, you have another attachment point there for your chest harness. So um, they did a really good job with that. Uh, one of the disadvantages to this, one of the cons, is you do have to thread the rope through the device, right? So it's not midline attachable. You know what I found over time, you know, keeping it on your rope as you're using it at the end of the day, you keep it on there, you just move it for inspection points throughout the, you know, every day to make sure that the, the, the wear is, is, uh, the wear is fine. So yeah, top of that, let's just rewind. Let's go back and back in history here of when mm -hmm. this thing first started and some of the, the issues that we had. Um, who do, who, do you know who designed, who built it? Who built it? Uh, well, I mean, Petzl, obviously. I know, but, but, uh, but yeah. the first prototype. Um, yeah, I'm feeling really bad about this because um, there's a gentleman's name. If you guys know who it was, he's, he's, uh, put it on here. He's helped me out tremendously with uh, getting some devices uh, used in competition over the years, and I, I feel really bad that I forgot his name. I don't know, I don't know if he's still with Petzl France, but anyway. Let's go back in time here. So before this this came out, I'm talking first gen. The issues they were having it only had two two points of attachment here. Uh, this one was at, wasn't there, and where this came together was there. You see this big black spacer in the middle? That wasn't that wasn't there. They didn't have this big spacer. It was just these two thin pieces of aluminum that came together with a hole in it. So it was very thin. And the reason why that um, failed was when the ca carabiner was in there, that piece was thin enough to where the carabiner can get to, to a point um, at a certain angle and get stuck. And at that point, it created a cantilever. So if an individual were to take a jump, right, you can actually, like a can opener, you have the leverage now of taking this and then popping that top off. So it actually broke that attachment. Um, at that time, you know, nobody was killed. I think there was a minor injury involved and it was during testing anyhow. So um, I was at, I went back to the facility at that time and it was able to put a carabiner into that position over and over again and be able to create that same scenario and break, break off some of the um, prototypes that we had in there. Not mm. prototypes, but some of the old zigzags that were failing. Gotcha. I just wanted to see it with my own eyes. So what they did to fix that is they put that black spacer in there, beefed it up, and never had an issue with that again. Right? So that's done. After that, they came out, and um, they had an issue with the top upper link here. So there was a little, you see, I see this rivet, and then above that rivet, you'll see a little tiny black um, set screw. There was there was a cracking or a small fracture that would happen just above that. Didn't affect the function of the zigzag. It never failed completely. It never got to the point where that was a, a an issue for the device and how it functioned at all. But it was still a crack. They still didn't make a re recall. So what they did is they beefed up this upper link and they widened it out, and you can see how it's kind of fatter right there on the tip than it is down here, and never had the issue again. So that was that was that was corrected. Um, that point, the device, uh, they were at the point of you know beefing this up and creating the third hole, and I think they got it to a point where it's been successful, mm -hmm. uh, no real major issues. There's been some slipping issues, I think, here and there on certain devices. I think that's com compatibility. I think that could be you know excessive wear and, there, and there's ways to test that which i can go over in a little bit but overall um, making sure that you know your inspection points going online making sure you understand how this functions you, you need to understand you know your maintenance and care how to inspect it and that whole nine so which is a major major portion to every piece of gear and hardware that we should have in our bag and how often are you inspecting it this is daily Daily. You know, this is the daily inspection. You know, anything that's life support that I'm going to put on the rope and, and carry myself around, I'm going to make sure 100% I'm going to inspect that before I go up the tree, right? So now going to inspection, someone say, well, how do you inspect it? You know, I can go over the whole inspection sheet with you. Petzl has a phenomenal uh, 
I, I love I love their website. You can no, not the paper. <laughs> don't don't read the paper <laughs> unless you really like reading small, small small words. No, I mean on a, it, this is this is good. Yeah, but if you go online, if you go online, they have an inspection uh, sheet on there that you guys can use, which is pretty pretty darn cool. The next is as I seen with this, you guys. If you guys are currently run this or maybe had this happen to you, is debris. You know, making sure it's clean. This thing gets beat up with sap, debris, rain, dirt. You know, it takes a lot of wear, especially as the rope runs through it. Whatever ends up on that rope ends up inside this device. So um, you get a lot of uh, lot of debris in here. I'm making sure, you know, the sap you can take, you know, you can scrub it off. You can, you know, you can soak it in warm, warm water and soap, you know, brush it off. But don't put in any... Um, don't put any chemicals on it. No you know, chemicals, don't so- no grease, no WD-40. Yeah, no WD-40, <laughs> no, no gas, yeah. you know, solvents like that. Um, there are, you know, pieces in here that, that can't, you know, you got rubber fittings and some nylon pieces that are in here that you, you definitely don't want to have uh, any degradation to. So um, that being said, you know, maintenance, excessive play, you know, really looking at, you know, your ball bearing pulley you're looking at your attachment here and um anything off visually you know is a red flag so red tag it if you do if not you can contact petzl they're pretty good about you know either answering the questions or contact your man where you where you bought it from and um they can send you a new one but now if there is um any damage or fractures or anything like that does petzl replace that for you that's a good question. I think it depends. I think it depends on the look at the wear and if it's um, just normal wear. You know, these things do take a lot, a lot of beating. So what's the life expectancy? Wear, I think it's a couple years. Okay. And they get a couple years of, of life expectancy on this. And what I say to people is, you know, you want to get the most out of it. You run. So this is this is uh, designed for use from 11.5 to 13 millimeter. Okay, eleven point five millimeter to thirteen millimeters. So, if you jump straight to the top and you go thirteen millimeters in here or half inch, and you run this thing for say a year, you're gonna wear that out. So now, you, if you try to go back and run eleven point five in there, it's probably gonna slip on you. So you want the most out of it and be strategic about it. You could start at eleven point five and kind of work your way up. And as it wears, you increase the rope diameter. It may not work for all. Some people won't even care. They're like, great, if it lasts me a year point. for 300 400 bucks, yeah, whatever. You know, I got a good device. So one of the pros about this, though, is is how quick and efficient and easy that it is. You know, it's it's kind of a, you know, I don't, don't want to say dummy proof, but you thread a rope in it and you go to work, right? Whether it be, you know, from MRS standpoint, very simple, toss a rope right into it. Obviously, a, a spliced eye won't fit in there. You run your tail through it, and once you get it set, you're good. Let me ask you this. Somebody said that um, we were, when we were in Baltimore, we decided to throw a wrench above it, and it was amazing. Did you say we as in, uh, where, was it, were they with me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was many, that was many years ago. Uh-huh. Uh, who, who was that, Luke? Uh-huh. Uh, nature's Canopy Tree Shrub Care, the longest Instagram name. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> it's a long Instagram yeah, name. Yeah. Um so yeah, you you're right. I did. And I, I've done some uh you know, a lot of testing when this thing was just in nuts and bolts in its rare form. Um was right around the same time that Kevin came out with his nuts and bolts looking actually it was just after because he designed the first rope wrench out of wood. It was a wood piece. And then he turned that wood piece into, you know, basically two pieces of metal and it was very archaic and you know, and I, I made my own tether for it. And I remember I was in Hawaii and I put this nuts and bolt piece with this nuts and bolt piece. And I was like, uh-huh. I hope I don't die, you know, <laughs> but I, you know, just to see if it worked and it worked beautifully. And yeah. I already knew that the evolution of this was going to head in that direction, which it did. But that was a long, long time ago. Um, but yeah, you know, at this point, you know, from an MRS standpoint, I think this has been a great product on the market. Um you got to like mechanical devices, you know, it's a, I, I don't even know what to compare it to. It's like, it's like, it's like you, you drive, you drive a Tesla and I drive, uh, you know, a 1972 F two fifty high boy. Like I don't have the bells and whistles. 
but man, I like that old school, uh, you know, and mm-hmm. you like self parking and a touch screen and you know, it's like, <laughs> I like how you, I like how you set that up. Hey, you know, you like your lattes and you know, I like beer. <laughs> You like, you know, Teslas and self-parking. I like rough and tough, 250, <laughs> pulling a bass boat. You like buying your fish at sushi restaurants, you know. I, I really like how you set me up there. Maybe made me look like a I fruit wasn't fruit. saying <laughs> you. In, I was just saying in general. Right? I know. So, I know. I you know, some funny. people like to so, feel a press act. Just so is this, uh, would you say this is for all uh, levels of experience, or is this more for a beginner getting in for the first time, for more somebody advanced, or is it just tomato tomato of what you like? Yeah, I think it is. I think it's straight from, you know, beginner, beginner climber all the way to advanced. You know, I ran many years competing with this thing. I fell in love with it. But I like mechanical devices, you know. And, you know, not that I dislike r- rope on rope. Um, I think I just have that side of me that I like, something about mechanical. I like the way it feels. I like, you know, the way it reacts on rope. Um, but it's all, it's all personal preference, but I think they did a great job on this when you compare it to a lot of the other, and they paved the way for other mechanical devices in the industry. So I think for them, um, you know, this would be a great place to start for somebody looking to kind of advance their systems and get into something mechanical and, you know, I still I know people that have been climbing this on years and still love it to this day. Yeah. So real quick to keep moving on this, um, talk real quick about compatibility. So how to test something like this if it's going to be work for you on your you know your body weight um, with the type of rope that you use. So you guys can go online and, and figure out how to how to test this as well. But you know the way this works, you guys, is you want to put this onto a single on a, on, onto a rope. You want to terminate that end of the rope so it's actually in an SRS configuration. And then you're just going to sit on it, on the ground. You're not going to climb off the ground with this. You're going to take the, you're going to tie into the system while you're sitting on the ground and just lean on it and sit. If you could put 100% of body weight on this, on a single configuration, and this could hold you, then it's suitable for, you know, and it's compatible for your body weight. So a lot of people don't know that. They don't know... And I've been climbing on this. Is it still good? Or, you know, my rope wrench is slipping. Um, is it, you know, still okay? Well, go through that test and go and change that rope. Move that rope. If you're running at 11.5 and it's slipping on you, move it up to 12. Move it up to 12 and a half. If you have to go straight to 13, go to 13 and see if it slips on you. Then you know it's going to work. Now, is there any different brands of ropes that it may work better with? Or that you found, like, you know, this 11.5 using this is better than this 11.5 using that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. And I think in the design process of this, you know, Tachyon 11.5 okay. was one of the big uh, the big ropes around it that, that was used at 11.5 to design this. So that would um, be ideal, you would say. If, if somebody's going for rope, they can't just buy 14 different ropes and try out. Would you say you know, the Tachyon 11.5 is your safe bet for the rope you need to use? Yes and no. I'd say, you know, if you follow the manufacturer specs here on, on, on any rope from 11.5 to 13, that's why I like the zigzag so much because it does run great on a wide, wide variety, variety of rope. Now, when you start getting into different types of rope, when you're, you know, because this is, is also uh, compatible with uh, Kern Mantle rope as well. So when we get in the Kermano rope, we're talking more strain count, uh, less elongation, more rigid. Uh, so it's going to react different, you know, good or bad. That's up to you. Do you like it to run fast? Is it, do you like to run, do you like more of a rigid rope? How, what's your style of climbing? Are you using this for MRS? Are you primarily using this with the chicane on SRS? So, you know, the compatibility using this both directions I think is, is really good. So for individuals that still want to climb SRS, but still want the option to, to be able to go back to MRS, say using it in crane work or using it on small, you know, ornamental trees where, you know, MRS for them may work better. Cause I hear this a lot. Um, this would be a great system to, to do that with. Awesome. All right. So I'll just keep moving here. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about the chicane and this is, a you know, 
another another item to discuss coming from the rope wrench. Uh, you know, Petzl t- took an extra step and said, okay, we're going to create our own. And our chicane sits right on top of this zigzag. So now, oh, I can put it backwards. I'm not paying attention here. I'm worried about the camera. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and attach here. So you can see I spun my carabiner upside down because you need a specific, you need Petzl specific carabiner to fit in the chicane. And so you have to rotate it all the way downward to where the gate faces the bottom to be able to attach it. So what I like about it though, it's snug. It's rigid and, stu- and, snu- and snug. So what's kind of nice about having the chicane here is how rigid this handle is and the carabiner. It kind of protects from side loading the actual uh, chain link pressic, all right? Not that you really want to side load this and that's, you should count on this as a, as a, some protection, but it does, it does help out a little bit. Um, the other item is understanding that this zigzag cannot be used in SRS unless it has a chicane. All right. This is one thing that kind of bothers me about this entire setup because I hear this a lot when I ask somebody on an assessment, what do you climb on? You know, what's your system? They're like, Oh, I run the, I run the zigzag. I run the zigzag. I go, okay, cool. So you, you MRS, right? Double rope. And they're like, no, 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 no. I climb single rope. I'm like, you climb the single rope with the zigzag. They're like, yeah, yeah. And like, Oh yeah, I have that thing on top. And I'm like, oh, so you have a chicane too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got that one too. <laughs> right. So I'm like, okay, this is a problem, right? So when people speak like that and don't, and use that terminology in my mind, they're telling everybody it's okay to climb solely on the zigzag SRS. And it's, it's not. A, it's not. It's a problem. So, you know, my fix to this, and, and hopefully we can, you know, this could be spread worldwide so people get this understanding. As a unit, this should be called something. All right. What should it be called? I call it the Shazag. The Shazag. The Shazag. So, right then and there, if I ask somebody what they climb on, they say Shazag. I know it's this and this, and I know exactly what they're using it for. Mm-hmm. Right. So when they say I climb on a zigzag, you know, then I could easily say, okay, that's MRS. They're climbing double rope. The Shazag. The Shazag. Brought to so, you by Jared Abergina. No, I'm not claiming it. It's just it, 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 <laughs> trademarked. I just, I just I'm claiming it for you. Just, trademark. Trademark. TM. <laughs> but um, you know, they did a great job on this device as far as how smooth this runs. So you know, you can't take away anything away from uh, the uh, rope wrench. It's like butter. You know, it's the most the most popular uh, setup on SRS and. Um, but people that w- love that zigzag and like this buttery feel, is this you can't beat this feeling. This feeling is one of a kind feeling. The disadvantage to this still is you have to thread the rope, and two, it's bulky, it's big, it's heavy. Um, but you know, you you lovers out there that use this, I mean, you guys could probably contest. There's there's no better feeling when you're you know ripping through the tree or making a nice long descent or taking a swing. It's just you know it's like butter. Yeah. Nice, nice. So cool. But uh, yeah. Other than that, um, any other tips and tricks with this? You know, th- th- this can go on for down a rabbit hole for for SRS devices, and I I would like to save that for its own little com- com- comparison. But for overall, um, more so from a product standpoint of, of rating something like this, I think this is, you know, if I had to rate it at a, at a, at a 10, um, I'd put this somewhere around a 7 just because, you know, the ease and use of it and, um, you know, how, how, gr- how great it feels and how quick I can get a, a beginner using something like this and be successful. Awesome. Awesome. Well, guys, if uh, if you guys enjoyed that today and you got something out of it, share it uh, on your page. Uh, also, too, remember, DM us, send us in what kind of different products and things you guys want to hear from. But uh, uh, this was Gear Talk. Uh, you heard it. You heard it here. So share it. Uh, we appreciate everybody out there. And remember to continue to elevate the standard of the industry through safety, training, and innovation. We'll see you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Peace. Peace.